Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to show you the best chords that you've never heard of. Everyone knows a G chord, it's a great chord, one of the best, a true classic, but there are also a lot of wonderful chords out there that are quite rare and deserve a bit of that spotlight that chords like G tend to hog. But before we get into it, I wanna quickly let you know that today is the last day of the holiday sale going on over at my course platform, samuraiguitartheory.com. Over there, I have four courses, The Rudiments and Beyond the Basics are a linear study of music theory made with a guitarist in mind. If you ever find yourself thinking you want a deeper look at why chords and music in general works the way it does, this is where you should start. My newest course, The Craft of Soloing, is designed for the musician who wants to take their soloing to the next level by thinking about phrasing, idea development, musical storytelling, and that kind of thing. Today's the last day that you can get anything over there 50% off with promo code HOLIDAY21. I've got a bunch of other things coming down the Samurai Guitar Theory pipeline. It'll be quite a while before I do another big sale like this one. So get them while the getting's good. You can find more information at SamuraiGuitarTheory.com. I'll also put up links in the description. Anyways, let's get to those chords. So here's the plan for today. I'm gonna to show you one of the best chords, tell you what the deal is with it, and then play a short progression that uses it. The first chord today is what I call the Irish Little Wing chord, and it sounds like this. I call it this because the only place that I've ever heard it is in a cover of Jimi Hendrix's Little Wing by the Irish band, The Corrs. It's an absolute beauty of a chord. The proper name for it is E minor 11. If we look at how each one of the notes in this chord relates to the root, then we have the root, fifth, nine, flat third, flat seven, and then the 11 on top. There's six different notes within this chord, which makes it rich, juicy, and just full of a good time. Um, anytime you see an E minor, you can replace it with this chord. The only exception to this would be if it's an E minor that comes from the key of C or E Phrygian. And I mean, of course, you also wanna make sure that it makes sense within the context. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you always should. Here's a short progression that uses this. Next up, we've got a set of chords that I call the Dave Matthews chords, not only because he's the only guitarist that I've ever seen use them, but because he uses them a lot. These chords are ridiculously easy. They're a ton of fun to use and they sound great. There's only two shapes that we need to know. First, we put our middle finger on the second fret of the low E string, the A is muted, open D rings out, and then our ring finger goes on the second fret of the G string. Both these two fingers are on the same fret. This is shape one and it sounds like this. For shape two, we move up our middle finger, one fret, A string's muted again, open D still ringing out. But now this time, our ring finger is one fret above where the middle finger is. Sounds like this and this is shape two. And what we're gonna do is move these two shapes through the key of D major. Starting off the F sharp again, we have shape one, off of G, shape two, off of A shape two, B is shape one, C sharp is shape one, and then off of the D we have shape two. And what's great about these is you can create really nice patterns with them. They're easy to slide around and they all sound good together so you really can't go wrong. Check out an example. Moving on, we have the kitchen sink chord, also known as the dominant seven altered. It sounds like this. What you do is pick a root note and then add any or all of the notes from its respective altered scale. You can add anything to it except the kitchen sink. It's a weird saying, I didn't invent it. So say for example, I wanna play an A7 altered. I'm gonna start with my A root. I'm probably gonna to wanna to have my third and my flat seven in there, but beyond that, I can add any notes from the A altered scale, those notes being A, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F, G, back to A. If this sounds like I'm talking another language, let me phrase this a different way. A7 altered is just a dominant seven with a flat five, so you'd have a root, third, flat five, flat seven, and then to extend upon that chord, you can use the flat or sharp nine and 
or the flat 13 to it if you so choose. And if it still sounds like I'm talking another language, use promo code HOLIDAY21 on my theory courses while they're still on sale, and we will be on the same page in no time. But on guitar, we only have at most six notes available to us at any given time, so we're not gonna be accessing all seven possible notes. What I'll do when I come across an altered chord is just kind of poke and prod at the notes, kind of like this. <laughs> Typically, when we come across these altered seven chords, they're gonna lead into a minor chord that's a fourth above or fifth below. So my A altered seven will typically lead into a D minor. And here's a little chord melody that uses these quite a bit. Next up is the D, add nine, add 11. And to any of you math wizards out there, that does not make it a D20. It sounds like this. If you can play an open C, you can play this chord because all you need to do is take your open C shape, move that exact same fingering up two frets, and there you have it. I'm gonna go on record here and say that this is my favorite guitar chord. I try to use it whenever I can, but the only place I've ever heard it in a recording is on REM's Man on the Moon. If you have any other examples of places where it's been used well, please let me know in the comments because I love hearing this chord. To me, this chord is the perfect blend of sweet and savory. It's like the salted caramel of guitar chords. You've harmony between the D, F sharp, and D, but between the F sharp and G, you have that dissonant semitone, which adds such a wonderful flavor. And then between the D and the E, you have a whole tone, which also adds a wonderful, nice, contrasting flavor. So next time you come across some boring, bland old D chord, you can replace it with this rare and beautiful one. The only exception would be if you're in the key of A, because that G note wouldn't make sense in that setting. Here's an example that uses this chord. Similar to the last one, we have kind of the minor version of it, which is the D minor 11, a D minor chord with that open G and E ringing out. With this chord, you take your D minor shape, root it on the A string, but then you let the G and E ring out, giving you that 11 and that nine again. Now, my favorite way of using this is thinking of it as a D minor coming from the key of F or D Aeolian. And what you do is you play that shape and then move the root note around, giving you some really nice sounds. Check it out. Next is the third inversion, drop two voicing of a major seven chord. It's a mouthful, it sounds like this. And the best way to explain this is by using a visual. Let's look at a C major seven, which has the notes C, E, G, B. When played like this, with all the notes in order, it's called the root position. First inversion is when you move the bottom note of the root position up an octave, so it is now on top of the chord. Third inversion is when you move the next two notes up an octave, so now the B is the lowest note in the chord. To create a drop two voicing of this inversion, you then drop the second highest note, the E, back down an octave. On guitar, it fits nicely on those top four strings. And the clash between the major seven and the root is lovely set against the harmonious nature of the rest of the chord. Anytime you see a major seven chord, you can play this shape. Here's an example.
Moving on, we have this chord, which would be an A sus2 with a sharp 11. For this one, I have three open strings ringing out, the A, the B, and the E, and then I play a major third between the B and the D sharp. On its own, it's a nice, open, airy sounding chord, but we can do something similar with this as we did with those Dave Matthews chords. This chord comes from A Lydian or E major, and what we're gonna do is take our fretted notes through the key of E, alternating between major and minor thirds while keeping those open strings ringing out. So if I take my initial shape and move it as low as I can while staying in the key of E major, I have another major third. When I move up, I use the minor third interval, Another minor third interval, major third interval, major third interval, here we are where we started, minor third interval, minor third interval, and another major third, an octave higher. And with that, I can create some top notch musical patterns giving me an A Lydian vibe. Check it out. last for today is a chord that gets a giggle whenever it's mentioned and people always ask me if it is in fact a real chord. It's a chord that I think deserves a little bit more respect, the C6-9. Within this chord we have the root, third, fifth, giving us our bass triad, but we also have the six and the nine, giving us quite a bit of character. I love using this chord specifically at the end of songs. Ending with a plain old boring triad can be so predictable. But by swapping out that C with a C6-9, we end on something that actually makes the ear go, hey, that's pretty cool. See, when a 6-9 chord is used right, everybody gets pleasure from it but because of its complex nature, if it's used in the wrong setting, it can be awkward, clumsy, and just a bit of a mess. Here's a good old 6-9 in a setting that does make sense. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the best chords that you have now heard of. Take them, go with them, and use them in your musical endeavors. Remember, today is the last day of the holiday sale going on in my course platform. Everything we've talked about today, and just music in general, is gonna be so much easier if you've learned the stuff that I teach in my courses. Everything is 50% off if you use promo code HOLIDAY21. Use that promo code while you still can. More info at samuraiguitar3.com, links in the description. Thank you all for watching and an extra big thank you to everyone who supports my channel through Patreon. If you wanna check out another video like this one, hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell and stay tuned for a wide range of musical content. Till next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, look after the planet. I'm Samurai Guitarist and I'll see you again soon.